Growing zones don't exist, my friends, at least not in the way that you think. And on top of that, the USDA just announced their new growing zones, also known as plant hardiness zones for 2023. So your zone may have even changed. I'm going to show you in this video why none of that really matters and what you should do instead to become an epic gardener. When I first started gardening, someone told me, they said, dude, just go on the internet and type in your zip code. It will tell you your hardiness zone. And then that hardiness zone will tell you what you can plant throughout the year. And while it is accurate, it's really not a full picture. And that's because the only thing one of these USDA plant hardiness zones measures is the average annual minimum temperature in a particular region. So take me here in San Diego, California. I'm what's called a zone 10B. That means that on average, it gets to 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So all that's really telling me is if something won't die at 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, you can keep on growing it. But if it will die, it will die at some point throughout the year. Thus, you won't be able to grow it year after year. So it's kind of a good way to tell you if you can grow something as a perennial plant outdoors, but that's about it. What they don't tell you is something like how hot it gets in the year. There's no high temp considered in a zone. There's no rainfall considered. Nothing as far as how a microclimate or a smaller climactic region, even something as small as a front yard garden like I'm standing in right now, might impact your zone. But before we get to microclimates and what to do instead of be beholden to this zone based thinking is actually understanding how these maps were created in the first place. So the 2012 map, which was about 10 years ago, that's the one they just updated for the 2023 map. That first map, they used about 8,000 weather stations to determine the average annual minimum temperature, and then they turn those into zones. Now with this new map that's just come up, you can see that most zones have shifted up at least a half or a full zone. So maybe from a 5A to a 5B or a 5A to a 6A, and you might say, the world's just getting warmer. And to some degree, that is definitely true. However, they used 13,000 or more weather stations, and the resolution of this new map is down to about a half mile, whereas the one before was about a five mile radius. So I don't have a half mile of space here. I might be told by this new map that I'm in a different zone simply because it's a more granular way of looking at the data. Let's say you know your zone and you're very confident that it is accurate, like me. I know I'm a 10B. I'm gonna show you why that still doesn't even really matter that much. Do you think that I'm a zone 10B when I stand right here? This is an area of my yard that really doesn't get a lot of sun. It's about 4 p.m. right now, and it's still in the shade. So this area is what we call a microclimate. It is an area that is different than the larger climate region that I'm standing in. And you could even expand this out as far as you want. I could have this as a small microclimate. My whole front yard is a larger microclimate. My actual yard and even my neighborhood as an even larger microclimate. Think about someone who lives in a really hilly area. If I'm down at the bottom of the valley and my neighbor just a quarter mile away is at the top of the hill, we are in very different microclimates even though we might be in the same zone. Take a look at this banana, my friends. Actually, one of you guys gave this to me. This is a blue java banana, ice cream banana. Very proud of it. Finally figured out how to make it grow in my area. It's not because I knew my zone. It's because I knew the plant, I knew the climate it wants, and I adjusted my microclimate so that it grows well right here. So take a look. If you look down at the bottom, you can see I'm mulching it with its own leaves. There's a lot of compost. It's in a nice mound. I have dedicated irrigation on this that gives it more water than the rest of the plants in this area because it needs more water than the rest of the plants. And to a plant, how would it normally have gotten water? Rain in the climate that it was in, right? So I'm sort of saying, hey, there's a lot of nutrition here, which I know you love. There's a lot of water here. It's located on my north wall, gets a good amount of sun. And speaking of walls, microclimates is something that cultures all around the world have been doing to manipulate plants to get what they want out of them. So if we take this wall right here, I have some very small grapes that I'm starting to grow. There are many monks and other folks who used to grow what's called an espalier fruit tree, maybe an apple, maybe a pear. So they would bring a stem up off the ground and they'd start to train those lateral branches to kind of come out like this. Why would they be doing that? It looks pretty. That's definitely part of it. A nice espalier tree, maybe one of the more beautiful things you'll see in a garden, but they're doing it because it's 
evenly distributing the heat across the entire surface of that plant. Imagine I planted an apple tree right here where I'm standing. It grows up, it grows out like this. What's happening? Over here, it can get very cold in that winter time, right? But right next to the wall, especially maybe an old brick wall or a cinder block wall, maybe one that's painted a darker color, it is absorbing a lot of heat and it's redeploying that heat out perfectly across the entire plant. And that is why you see that type of plant manipulation. So you can think about building a microclimate by just kind of working with what you have. Maybe I have a nice shady area like my artichoke patch. Maybe I'll grow artichokes there. That's what they're gonna want, right? Or I have this wall, what can I do to actually make the plant I want to grow, grow well? So yes, a new zone map came out and your zone may have gone up by a half a point or even a full zone, but it doesn't really matter that much because first of all, you've already been adjusting. It's not like it magically went up when the map came out, it's been going up. So as a gardener, you're always kind of trying to figure out how to get better every single season. What can I adjust? How much did it rain last year? How much might it rain this year? Did I transplant my tomatoes at the right time or should I have waited a little bit longer? So you're considering all these different factors. A zone is a really great place as a beginner to just get a sense of the world. Just figure out how do plants grow? Why would they grow well here versus somewhere else? But it really shouldn't be the ending point. And that's why this new hardiness zone map, while helpful, isn't the only thing to think about when you garden. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.